Welcome to part three of Sport on 7. We'll get updated in a moment with the big results in the world of sport. But first, international football happens in the UAE. And for both the UAE and the Australian under-23 teams, a huge game awaits. Thursday night saw international football in Dubai at the Al Maktoum Stadium in Oud Mehta. The Philippines, currently based in the UAE for a training camp, were playing the Australian under-23 side. Australia are currently in the middle of their qualification campaign for the London Olympics and with just three points from four games, things could be going better. We've got a lot of pride in ourselves and we've got a good squad and we've been unlucky the last, last couple of games and hopefully that turns it and we get the three points and then get another three points against Iraq back home in Australia and, and hopefully um, head off to London um, later on this year. In this friendly, the Aussies came out 1-0 winners, but with their form somewhat less than convincing in recent months, their coach, Aurelio Vidmar, is getting worried that they've only managed one goal from five games. However, still has belief. Oh, well, we haven't scored a goal, so that's got to be worrying. But, uh, look, I can't complain. They've uh, really worked their butts off to uh, uh, try to perform at the best level, and, uh, and I think we have. So, um, you know, I'm not complaining at all. So the coach is confident about their chances of getting to London, but have the Aussie fans seen enough from this performance to suggest their fortunes will change? Uh, I don't think I have really. I mean, um, I, I, lo I, lo I really enjoy watching the players, both when they're playing for the national team and also, and also when they're playing at home in the A-League. Uh, but having kept up reading the news articles and the, and the, and the match reports, um, we, we should have done more. For the Aussies, the game against the UAE on Wednesday night is vitally important. Fail to win it, and they will fail to get to the Olympic Games for the first time in 18 years. For the Philippines, preparations are going very well here in Dubai, ahead of the Challenge Cup in the poll in March. Well, very much. We were very much excited about uh, what's happening with the Asgas because they've improved a lot from the uh, very first game that they played against Uzbekistan. And now we can see that they're more organized, they're tactically, they're tactically tight, and they're playing fantastic football right now. Football attendances in Dubai are known to be quite low. However, tonight, the Filipino community are out in force, and they are determined to create an atmosphere, and a loud one. We're very proud that there are so many Filipinos here and they buy tickets and then watch the Filipino how to play against the strong team of the under 23 of Australia. We're very proud. Filipinos are very supportive everywhere we go. So it's like we are in Philippines because too many uh, fans, too many followers and they are very good supporters. They cheer a throw in like it's a goal. They're very yeah, loud. Yeah, that's why whatever we do, they scream and they really enjoy watching our. Because football in the Philippines just has started, and that's why they really love football, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, talking of that Challenge Cup in March in Nepal, how do you rate your chances over there? It's a tough group that you're in, but yeah. uh, do you think uh, you're confident going into it? Yeah, but uh, you know, football is football. You never know. We, that's why we do our 100% in the match. So we will see what's going to happen. Even the group is tough. We will do our best. We try our best. So with the Philippines looking ahead to a big game against Malaysia and then the Challenge Cup in March, where they'll be hoping to perform like they did at the Suzuki Cup in 2010 when they got to the semi-finals. For Australia, it's all about getting three points against the UAE on Wednesday night. Here are those tables then for the men's Asian qualifiers to get to London uh, for the Summer Olympics. Korea Republic on eight points and Oman doing well, just a point behind there. Qatar and Saudi Arabia a little further back. In Group B, uh, they can see Australia have got a tough time if they want to qualify, uh, needing that win against the UAE to still be in with a chance. That game happens Wednesday night, as we were just saying. Uh, the UAE uh, going very well, currently lying second behind Uzbekistan. Uh, first place qualifies for London. Second places uh, will go into a playoff. Group C, Malaysia already failed to get to London. Uh, but for Syria, Japan and Bahrain, it's still all to play for. Moving on then, the Champions League was back in action, of course, over the last week. The big results uh, from the week that saw Barca uh, get their win over Bayern Leverkusen. Arsenal suffered 
a huge loss at the San Siro, a 4-0 deficit, which uh, pretty much sees them exit the competition once the second leg uh, comes around. FA Cup weekend as well. Big results uh, in this. Arsenal, uh, well, they've had a, a terrible week, haven't they? Uh, they went, uh, went down 2-0 against Sunderland, so they are now out of the FA Cup. More pressure as well for AVB, the Chelsea boss, as his side could only get a 1-0 draw against Birmingham City. And Everton saw off Blackpool, uh, so that sees them through to the next round of the FA Cup. Six nations back in action, of course, over the next few weeks. And uh, weather affected, of course, last weekend. The game against France and Ireland was called off uh, just five minutes before uh, kickoff to the uh, upset of many fans who travelled uh, to the stadium in Paris. Uh, for the ones that did go ahead, though, England got that win against Italy uh, to follow up the opening win against Scotland. And Wales saw off Scotland as well. Let's see how those results affect the Six Nations table. Wales on top with four points. England also with four in second. Ireland, Scotland and Italy all yet to record a win. Latest cricket for you. Australia lost to Sri Lanka. Uh, the Aussies scored 158 all out after 40.5 overs. Sri Lanka managed 152 for two. And here in Dubai, England secured yet another one-day international win over Pakistan. England finished 226 for one. Pakistan, 222 for ten. So it's been a, a busy week in sport then, hasn't it? And the next seven days will be just as busy. We'll be back next Monday for Sport on 7, looking back at the week of sport. Until then, have a good week. Goodbye. Thank you.